Hi, my name is Shrey and today I will be explaining question 3 from Lead Code's most recent competition, uh, 200. And question, th question 3 is minimum swaps to arrange a binary grid. So the question gives you a binary grid consisting of zeros and ones, and it wants you to uh, make the grid valid in the minimum number of swaps. And a grid is valid if the cells above the main diagonal are zero. And the main diagonal starts from the leftmost top cell right here to the rightmost bottom cell right here. So that entire line connecting those two cells is the main diagonal. So another thing to keep in mind is to accomplish making the grid valid, you can swip, you can swap two adjacent rows. So the two rows have to be like the, the two rows have to be next to each other. So yeah, um, it seems a little bit confusing, but let's just go straight into example one. So as you can see, I already wrote some stuff out and I'll tell you what that means. So first of all, this is our main diagonal. So these three cells have to be zero. And the way I approached this question was through a greedy approach. And basically that's just taking the optimal solution at um, each scenario. And what we notice immediately is that in row one, we need to have these two cells as zero. And, it, and in row two, we need to have at least, we need to have one trailing zero. And in row three, we need to have, it doesn't matter how many trailing zeros we have. So what we do is we take the trailing zeros of each row. So row one, we have zero trailing zeros. And that's why I put zero. Row two, we have one trailing zero because this zero right here. And row three, we have two trailing zeros. So that's actually swapped. What we need is we need two trailing zeros right on, on top, basically. For row, uh, row one needs to have two trailing zeros. So we can do this by moving this two to the top and that would take two swaps. So now um, we put that to the top and move everything down. So two, zero, one. So great, row one is settled. We don't have to worry about this again. Now what we have to do is um, we check row two and we say, hey, row two needs to have at least one trailing zero. And so we scan down the list and we say, oh, we found at least one. If this was two right here and this was one, it wouldn't really matter because um, it wouldn't matter because you just find the closest one which will satisfy it. So two would be acceptable in this case. But going back to the example, we need to move this one up top right here. Um, so now we're gonna have two, one, zero. So that's valid now, that's valid. And the distance between this is how we determine how many swaps we need. So the distance here was two, so that's why I put a two here. And the distance here was one, that's why I put a one here. And finally, um, it doesn't matter how many trailing zeros we have because we need greater than or equal to zero, and we have that. So we would return three. So yeah, that's the um, entire solution to this question um, just through a visual diagram. And if that's still a little bit confusing, I will now explain that in pseudocode just to make it a little bit more clear. So initially what we have to do is we need to um, declare an array list which will basically keep track of the number of trailing zeros in each row. So we're kind of converting this um, 2D grid into like a one dimensional um, array list. So declare an array list and then for um, for entire grid length, so I starting at zero in this case going um, less than three. Um, so for the entire grid length, we need to just add trailing zeros to array list. So yeah, that's um, the first step of this question, basically. Um, we need to declare the array list and then through some type of loop, add the trailing zeros to the array list. And next, what we have to do is, um, you have to say for um, the grid, for the entire grid length again, um, we need to see um, how many trailing zeros we need. So down here, I'm gonna talk about one thing, which is, um, this thing I call the trailing length formula, trailing zero, trailing zero formula. 
And what that is is basically um, uh, if we have a three by three grid, um, in row one we need to have two trailing zeros. So um, the way we can do that is just saying the grid length minus the current um, row number minus one. And since this is marked by elements, it would be i equals zero, which represents row one. So three minus zero minus one equals two. So that's the trailing zero formula. So we ask ourselves if, um, I'm going to use AL to denote array list. So we say if the array list at a specific point, which I call I, um, is greater than or equal to the trailing zero, is equal to the trailing zero at that specific row, well then um, we need to um, add that distance to a add that distance to swap variable and I forgot to declare swap up here so let me just go ahead and do that swap is the number of which we're going to return in the end so declare swap variable add that distance to swap and then just um, add um, the add the um, number and what I mean by that is we would add two to the beginning so add the, um, how do I phrase this? I'll say add the number which satisfies the condition to the beginning of the array list and push everything down. And it'll automatically push everything down. So yeah, that's what we do if, um, if um, the array list at that specific point is greater than the trailing zero. And if that isn't the case, then you just, um, continue um, looping through the uh, looping through the array list and finding a value which works uh, one more thing to keep in mind is that if um, if we can't um, find a value in the array list which satisfies the, the condition and what I mean by that is an example too right here um, there's no way when you swap the array list that the condition will be satisfied and in this in my um, solution if you can't find a number in the array list which satisfies a condition um, so if there isn't a number in the array list which satisfies a condition and the condition is um, if the number is greater than the trailing zeros um, which satisfies a the condition then just return negative one and yeah, just through that approach, and just through that approach, um, it will return the minimum number of swaps needed. So yeah, that's the um, entire solution to this question. I know it's a little bit tricky, so um, if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. And as always, if this video helped you in any way, please like and subscribe, and I'll be back next week with more videos. Thank you.